Hello, I'm Dr. Mohamed Rashmon, a senior ICU physician in Security Forces Hospital Dammam. We will talk today about the non-invasive mechanical ventilation in COVID-19 patients with ARDS. The first question that we should ask, what are the non-invasive ventilatory support devices that can be used for respiratory failure? First, we can use the NIV, the non-invasive mechanical ventilation. Second, we can use the high-flow nasal cannula oxygen. First, let's talk about NIV, the non-invasive mechanical ventilation. Most of us are using the NIV on daily basis to support a lot of hypoxemic respiratory failure patients. There is there are a lot of clinical indications for NIV. It includes acute exacerbations of COPD, facilitated weaning in COPD, acute cardiogenic pulmonary edema, immunocompromised patients. Also, it can be used in post extubation in high risk patients, including patients with underlying cardiac and pulmonary disorder. It also can be used for post operative respiratory failure, motor neuron diseases. Do not intubate patients as a palliative treatment, cystic fibrosis, obesity hypoventilation syndrome. And it can be used as in, case, in some case reports in restrictive disorders, upper airway obstruction, and acute respiratory disease syndrome. If all these are clinical applications for NIV in patients with respiratory failure, why not using it in COVID-19 patients with respiratory failure? Actually, during the early pandemic of COVID-19, there were limited data about the efficacy and safety of NIV in COVID patients, and there were a lot of questions. Do NIV really can make us avoid intubation and the mechanical ventilation for COVID-19 patients, or it will just make patients worse? Is NIV safe for healthcare providers? Do NIV really? Was a trial in COVID-19 patients. But why now thinking about NIV in COVID-19 patients? As most of us noticed in our ICUs, there was a high mortality associated with intubation and mechanical ventilation in COVID-19 patients, which raised a question. Do mild to moderate COVID-19 ARDS really Need intubation and mechanical ventilation too early? Is there is a rule for helmet CBAB via NIV for respiratory support to limit the spread of aerosolized visor particles? Also, most of us noticed that there are higher levels of pulmonary compliance and shunt fraction seen in COVID 19 patients with severe ERDS compared to the expected levels of ERDS from other causes. An early study from Wuhan showed that there is decreased recruitment inflation ratio less than 0.5 in 80% of COVID-19 patients with severe ERDS, suggesting poor pulmonary recruitability. So intubation and mechanical ventilation for the application of high PEEP may accentuate the underlying microvascular injury, and it will only contribute to worsen the outcome. And it also will not add too much benefit for improving oxygenation and ventilation. So, can we avoid unnecessary intubation and mechanical ventilation for such type of patients? Can we avoid the need for unnecessary sedation, muscle relaxants, vasopressors, and the inotropes? Now, what about efficacy? Is NIV effective in such type of patients? Can we use NIV in COVID-19 pneumonia? Actually, there was a recent systemic review and the meta-analysis concluded that NIV can improve survival in the acute setting when it is applied early for respiratory failure. However, the benefit is lost when it is used too late in respiratory deterioration. Also, we should select types of patients who will 
be benefit from NIV. Now, which type of patients that we can apply the NIV? As shown in the figure, the BF ratio, if more than 150, NIV can be applied. After application of NIV, the patient should be monitored closely in the next hour. If there is no improvement or the patient become more worse or there is inability to maintain a PF ratio more than 150 with no reduction in the respiratory rate and increasing FI2 requirements, which is defined as FiO2 more than 80% after one hour of NIV application. That would be considered an indication for endotracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation. Also, we should monitor the expiratory tidal volume, which if more than 9.5 ml per kg, that it is an alarm for possible NIV failure and the patient should be monitored closely for early intubation and mechanical ventilation. What about respiratory support after extubation? Can we use the NIV as a support after extubation? As we all know that NIV can be used in high-risk patients after extubation, which includes the patients with underlying cardiac or pulmonary dysfunction. Can we use it in the patient with COVID-19 after extubation? Actually, the NICE guidelines now recommend that we can use the NIV as a respiratory support after extubation, especially that most of these patients are having residual respiratory and cardiac abnormality. Now, what about safety of NIV while you are using it on COVID-19 patients? Is NIV is safe for the healthcare providers? The main concern raised against the application of NIV in the setting of viral pneumonia is the potential for aerosol dispersion. Chewing and colleagues in Wuhan Studies the efficacy of NIV and the risk of disease transmission on 20 patients with positive serology for COVID-19 with severe ARDS. These patients were treated with NIV and 105 healthcare providers were taking, were taking care of these patients. None of the healthcare providers who did the serologic test showed any positivity for SARS. What is the best modality for NIV application in COVID-19 patients. Our first option should be the helmet CBAB. The second option can be the full face mask CBAB, the non-vented one. This is the helmet mask. As shown in the picture, there is a vinyl hood, in and out ports, latex or silicone neck seal, neck ring, patient access port, fixation belt, air, in and out. Helmet CBAB has been shown to be the best solution for CBAB or NIV application for COVID-19 patients with ERDS. It has a lot of advantages. The first, there is minimal or no dispersion from all the leaks of helmet CBAB. Second, it provides a significant increase in the inspired oxygen pressure up to 10 cm water. It also enables the patient self cloning to improve oxygenation, which is a limit the needs for multiple personnel to perform this in intubation, intubated patients. The comfort of the helmet limits the need for sedation and subsequent inotropic support, especially that not all the patients are comfortable with the full mask in IV that we have tons to give some sort of sedation to alleviate an anxiety. Also, the helmet allows the patient to see, read, 
talk, interact easily than other NIV devices, which alleviates the stress imposed, imposed on these type of patients. There are extra pores present in the helmet CPAP, which allows for a seal size for insertion of NGT for administration of regulizers and enable the patient to drink from a straw. There is also a monitor that controls gas flow in the helmet to from 30 to 60 liters to prevent repressing and the carbon dioxide retention. The other option is to use the full face mask CPAP. Of course, we should use the non vented one. In vented face masks, there is a gap between the mask and the ring connecting the mask to the expiratory limb, allowing expired air to be leaked out. It also preferred to have a viral filter on the expiratory limb. If there is no such filter, we can use the standard mask, but that is the least preferred option. Our targets after application of NIV is saturation of 94 to 96% in acute hypoxemic respiratory failure, and we can accept a saturation of 88 to 92% in acute on top of chronic respiratory failure. Compared to standard oxygen, high flow nasal cannula delivers heated and humidified oxygen by a short nasal prong. High flow nasal cannula reduces the work of pacing as optimally conditioning the delivered gas by warming and humidifying it to physiological conditions, spares the body the energy cost of warming and humidifying the inspired gas. Warm humid gas is also associated with better conductance and pulmonary compliance. It also improves mucociliary function, thus facilitating secretion clearance decreasing the risk of atelectasis and improving ventilation perfusion ratio and oxygenation. The most important clinical benefit of high flow nasal cannula oxygen is that of efficient supplemental oxygen delivery. It also generates a flow dependent FiO2, so it is able to maintain a high FiO2 by delivering flows higher than the spontaneous inspiratory demand thus minimizing room air entrainment. In order to maximize the benefit of high flow nasal cannula oxygen, the flow rate must be titrated to match the patient in respiratory demand and severity of respiratory distress. Also, high flow nasal cannula oxygen is able to decrease the anatomic dead space by washing carbon dioxide out of the airways. Reduction in the anatomic space then leads to improved work of breathing and lower respiratory rate. Therefore, patients with hypercarbia, in addition to hypoxemia, gain benefit from high flow nasal cannula oxygen, not only through reduction in the anatomic space, but also through reduced carbon dioxide production via lower metabolic edema. Also, high flow nasal cannula oxygen provides a certain amount of post pressure in the upper airways generated by the high flow oxygen flow rate. This figure shows the high flow nasal cannula. It consists of an air oxygen blender, which allows FI2 ranging from 0.2 to 1 and generating flows of up to 60 liters per minute. The gas is heated, humidified by an active heated humidifier and deliver, delivered via a single limb. What about the efficacy of the high flow nasal cannula? High flow nasal cannula oxygen has its advantages in acute hypoxic respiratory failure. The Florali trial compared the high flow nasal cannula oxygen with the standard oxygen and the NIV and identified reduced ICU mortality in 90 days. Although the primary outcome of interest was the intubation rates, 
and there was no statistically difference among the devices when come to intubation rate. In more recent systematic review and meta-analysis, including nine studies, compared the high flow nasal cannula to the conventional uh, oxygen therapy, and they did find that it reduces the intubation rate, but perhaps there was no impact on ICU mortality and length of stay. Let's take a moment to look back at the SARS experience. Approximately 50% of patients have some form of hypoxemic respiratory failure. 20 to 30% of these patients were admitted to ICUs for high dependency units. About one third of these patients were having hypoxemia, had high nasal flow cannula. In Hong Kong, the use of high flow nasal cannula avoided intubation in about one third of their cases. It's very important to monitor your patient. If in, on, in the IV, or in high flow nasal cannula. Despite the use of the high flow nasal cannula, however, the impending deterioration should be early recognized by close monitoring of these patients in high dependency units. Taking into consideration data coming from China, now SSCM recommends the use of high flow nasal cannula with hypoxia despite conventional oxygen therapy. They even recommend the use of high flow nasal cannula over the non-invasive mechanical ventilation with close monitoring of these patients for any deterioration for early intubation and mechanical ventilation. What about safety of high flow nasal cannula? Is it safe for healthcare providers? One potential concern that has been raised about the use of high flow nasal cannula oxygen, that it could aerosolize the respiratory tract pathogen. Using evidence from several recently published studies, WHO concluded that the high flow nasal cannula oxygen doesn't create widespread dispersion of the exhaled air. Therefore, it should be associated with low risk of transmission of respiratory viruses. They do recommend wearing a standard medical face mask within two meters of the patient. However, a new study showed that the distance of droplet dispersion from coughing increases by an average of 0.4 meters when using high flow nasal cannula. And it traveled farther than the WHO recommended two meter safe exclusion zone. Based on this evidence, it's better to keep COVID-19 patients on high flow nasal cannula oxygen at the least single occupancy room with either negative pressure or high efficiency particulate air filtration system. Now, which non-invasive mortality is better to use for hypoxemic respiratory failure in COVID-19 patients? As we all know, that one size fits all approach to acute, acute respiratory failure is misguided, and the choosing the right non invasive oxygen support likely requires a precision based approach that matches a given strategy to the observed phenotype of acute respiratory failure, coupled with incorporating clinician experience and the comfort with each technology. For instance, perhaps lung injury that is non responsive to PEEP is best served with a trial of high flow nasal cannula. Alternatively, NIV may be considered if the lung injury seems to be PEEP responsive. Also, with milder hypoxemia and the BF ratio more than 200, it should be reserved for a face mask interfa interface. And while the severe hypoxemia with a prolonged need of NIV application reserved for the helmet. In conclusion, the high flow nasal cannula oxygen and the NIV are effective treatment modalities for COVID-19 associated acute respiratory failure, particularly in patients with mild to moderate ARDS and in negative pressure rooms 
it could be a viable initial alternative to mechanical ventilation. 